I love when all the uninformed, unintelligent get on here and talk about Russia being communist. Russia hasn't been communist for almost, for between 20 and 30 years. Russia is a democracy. In Russia, the children can go play outside without their parents having to worry about somebody kidnapping them or raping them or killing them. You can walk down the streets and you don't have to worry about getting robbed or shot. You are going to not believe, and I show you in just a moment, where this genius, who's not part of the unintelligent, got that exact phrasing from, got that pro-Russia talking point from, which he continued on to then say this. So, yes, America is no longer the greatest nation on earth. Yeah, Russia is probably safer, freer, and definitely more mentally stable. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so Russia is not communist anymore. He's right about that. But a democracy? A quick Google search will let you know that it is a sham fake democracy. It is an authoritarian country where Vladimir Putin will do anything possible to cling to power, wins elections by implausible landslides because obviously people feel forced to vote for him, and um, he regularly kills journalists who are critical of him. So not exactly the bastion of democracy you may hope. But where did he get that talking point that the street are safer and it's a better place than America. Could it be from good old far-right leader Tucker Carlson? Well, Carlson famously just interviewed Putin at length the other day and did not push back on him on anything during the interview. Didn't call him out on any of the human rights abuses, any of the, uh, let's say, uh, invasion of his neighboring country that has cost our nation so much of our national treasure and so many lives, both on the Ukrainian and Russian side. In an interview in Dubai, just a few days after his interview with Putin, Carlson, who's always been a Russia propaganda spewing machine, said this. What was radicalizing, very shocking and very disturbing for me was the city of Moscow, where I'd never been, the biggest city in Europe, 13 million people. And it is so much nicer than any city in my country. I had no idea. My father spent a lot of time there in the 80s when he worked for the U.S. government and barely had electricity. And now it is so much cleaner and safer and prettier aesthetically. It's architecture, it's food, it's service than any country, city in the United States that you have to, and this is not ideological, how did that happen? How did that happen? And at a certain point, I don't think the average person cares as much about abstractions as about the concrete reality of his life. And if you can't use your subway, for example, as many people are afraid to in New York City because it's too dangerous, you have to sort of wonder, like, isn't that the ultimate measure of leadership? And that's true, by the way, it's radicalizing for an American to go to Moscow. I didn't know that. I've learned it this week. So not only did that MAGA man at the top of this video look like he was recording it while escaping from someone trying to attack him in a crawl space, probably his own reflection in the mirror, Carlson believes it was radicalizing to visit Russia. And now it is so much cleaner and safer and prettier aesthetically, it's architecture, it's food, it's service, than any country, it's city in the United States that you have to, and this is not ideological. The country currently invading a sovereign nation, the country currently trying to impose its will and expand its borders while costing our nation so much treasure and so many lives on both the Russian and Ukrainian side. Carlson thinks it's a nice place and there's no city like it in good old America and it's so much safer there. He found it radicalizing. Oh, he's radical. He's a radical pro-Russian guy now because he's always been a pure spewer of Russian propaganda, but now he's radicalized in that pursuit. Well, good for him. He went further. Here's how he described President Biden as compared to Vladimir Putin. Does Biden understand the law of action and reaction which moves a country like Russia? I, I can't overstate how incapacitated Joe Biden is. That's not an attack. That is a fact. And anyone who tells you otherwise is lying. How incapacitated Biden is? And he's not making any decisions? Look, I have certainly criticized Biden a time or two. He's not sharp. His memory's bad. He doesn't seem impressive publicly. But incapacitated is going too far. Also, maybe saying that in Dubai, when coming back from being a pure propaganda piece for our adversary, Russia, is not the time to say that level of criticism against the American president and then go on, as he did, to praise how incredibly impressive of a leader Putin was. But it got worse. I didn't go to Russia, of course, to promote Vladimir Putin. And if, I, if that was my purpose, I'd say so because I'm not embarrassed. If that was my purpose, I'd say so because I'm not embarrassed? Thou doth protest too much 
Tucker, Tucker. What do you mean you're not embarrassed? If you didn't do it, why would you say the I'm not embarrassed part? Your subconscious was spilling out there. He brought it home next level when he ended his conversation in Dubai by saying all of this. When an American journalist interviews someone like Vladimir Putin, the whole point of the interview is to say, I'm a good person and you're not. And that interview was aimed at his colleagues in the newsrooms in the United States. I'm a good person. Why are you such a bad person? You're committing genocide. Okay. That's not fruitful, and that's certainly not my role. I care what God thinks of me, what my wife thinks of me, and what my four children think of me, and that's all I care about. So I don't need to prove that I'm a good person. I want to hear Vladimir Putin talk so people in my country can assess what's happening. Uh, uh, that's I'll, it. I'll, I'll, I'll use the devil's advocate. But I'll advocate say, away. Yes. Okay, I'll tell you. You, you should challenge in, in, in the rules of an interview, and you're a master in, in, your, in your business. Uh, it's not for me to give you a lecture about that, but you should challenge some ideas. For instance, uh, you, you, you didn't talk about freedom of speech in, in Russia. You did not talk <laughs> about Navalny, about assassinations, about about the restrictions on uh, opposition in the coming uh, elections. I didn't talk about the things that every other American media outlet talks about. Why? Yes, this because is my Because those question. are covered, and because I have spent my life talking to people who run countries in various countries and have mm. concluded the following, that every leader kills people, including my leader. Every leader kills people. Some kill more than others. Leadership requires killing people. Sorry. That's why I wouldn't want to be a leader. Um, that Press restriction is universal in the United States. I know because I've lived it. I've you know, asked my former, you know, I, I've had a lot of jobs. Um, and I've done this for 34 years and I know how it works. And um, there's more censorship in Russia than there is in the United States, but there's a great deal in the United States. And so, I, you know, at a certain point, it's like people can decide whether they think, you know, what, what countries they think are better, what systems they think Sir, are better. I, 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 I just I, want to know what he thinks. That was yes, the whole point. Yes. So there it is. Plainly spoken, Tucker Carlson is Russian, wants to move to Russia because it's a far better place than America. I mean, this man literally was comparing the murders of political opponents done by Putin in Russia to what's done here in America, comparing the censorship of the press to what's done here in America because he was fired for lacking journalistic standards? Really? That's why even Putin himself just came out and said the following, quote, frankly, I thought he would behave aggressively and ask tough questions. I wasn't just prepared for this. I wanted it, Putin insisted, according to the Daily Beast. The Russian president complained that Carlson's failure to ask pointed questions, quote, didn't give him an opportunity to do what he was prepared to do, and therefore the interview didn't turn out as engaging or substantive as it could have been. Putin himself thought Tucker went to soft on him. But who could be surprised? Tucker Carlson is the same man who, when the Ukraine war first broke out, when Russia first invaded, literally said this to a U.S. lawmaker, wondering why we should be on the side of Ukraine over Russia. But, but why, why would we, why would we take important. Ukraine? But hold on. But why would we take Ukraine's side and not Russia's side? Uh, it's a sincere question. If you're looking from the American perspective, side. no, but why? I mean, Who's got the energy reserves? Who's, who's the major player in world affairs? Who's the potential counterbalance against China, which is the actual threat? Why would we take Ukraine's side? Why wouldn't we have Russia's side? I, I don't, I'm totally confused. And Tucker then went on to say that he thinks he prefers countries to be democracy. I mean, maybe, sort of, but not in this particular case of Russia, which is perhaps why, when interviewed by Alex Wagner this week, Hillary Clinton said this about what she thinks Tucker Carlson is. Tucker Carlson is in Moscow right now interviewing Vladimir Putin. Right. The first American, I'll say, journalist uh, to interview Putin since the war in Ukraine mm -hmm. began. What does that tell you about Tucker Carlson and right-wing media and also Vladimir Putin? Well, it shows me what I think we've all known. He's what's called a useful idiot. Useful idiot's a pretty good way to put it. And if you're not one of those, you might want to follow me on Instagram at Ben Glebe for lots more content, including stand-up comedy videos. Thanks for watching.